Hey guys, welcome back to the show. On today's show, I want to give you some updates as to where the heck I've been for the past month and a half or so. And I want to discuss a couple different topics. We're going to try to, you know, uh, bring everything into one little show here. I'll try not to make it too long, but that's going to be right here, right now on Ham Radio for non-techies. Hey, welcome back to Ham Radio for Non-Techies, guys. My name is Scott. My call sign is KI5NPL, and I run the Ham Radio uh, YouTube channel here where we try to get you to study for and pass your exams so you can become a licensed ham operator as quickly as possible so you can enjoy this hobby as well as, as much as we do. So like I said, I wanted to uh, just touch on a couple little things today, and one of those is... Uh, some updates as to what's been going on. I know I've been gone for a little while. The last video I put out was kind of like a little bit of a little bit of an anger rant, but that's you know that's just me. Uh, so what I've been doing is I've been uh, working on various projects. Like I said, I'm not able to just do videos right now and just constantly be doing the ham radio videos. And I also like to put out videos that bring you guys value. If you're going to spend your time watching my videos, I want to at least make sure the stuff I'm bringing you brings value and is worth your time to watch, not just put out a video for the sake of putting out a video. Uh, so the first thing is the updates. So I've been working on various projects, been doing lots of product photography and a lot of web design stuff because I'm my buddy and I are talking about opening up, and this is kind of a secret, so shh. Uh, we're talking about opening up a uh, online cigar shop. So we're trying to get some different sets built, and we're trying to get different pictures taken, take some really nice, you know, there's really nice pictures of all the different products, and uh, we've been working on that. And there's been a lot involved with that. I had to go buy a bunch of new camera gear and lighting and stuff like that. And we had to build sets for all this stuff and get all the little props and things. So it's been a kind of a very dragged out and uh, very involved situation. But it's hopefully going to be fun. And if everything goes through, you guys will have a kick-ass source to go buy some cigars if you're into that kind of thing. Uh, secondly, I uh, was on a hunt. I went on a hunt down in South Texas. buddy of mine's got a 3,000-acre ranch. And uh, we were down there. We were supposed to go down there on a hog hunt. And we went hog hunting. They had had bobcat and they had uh, mountain lions and all kinds of other crazy crap running around trying to kill us. Uh, but uh, he also had a really nice long like runway down in his property. And I was like, you know, I've been wanting to do the one mile shot with my rifle for a long time. I spent a lot of time, a lot of money, and a lot of effort building up this particular rifle that I've got. I got a Ruger Precision Rifle, six point five Creedmoor. And I'm running a uh, 5 to 25 uh, Vortex Viper scope. And uh, yeah, so I was like, you know what? Let's just go ahead and get this done. So I grabbed my range finder, went down. We put a target way down about a mile. It, actually, it was actually 1,784 yards, so a little, a little under 18 football fields long, just for reference here. And uh, I took the shot, and about four shots in, I actually hit the target. So I am part of the One Mile Club now, and I can hit a target at one mile away or from another zip, zip code. <laughs> so that was kind of fun. But that's mainly the stuff that has been, that's been going on here is I've been trying to just get a lot of stuff done. I've been trying to deal with new clients, bringing in new clients for my web design stuff. I got a couple. Of, there's actually a viewer here who wants me to build a website for him, so I'm working with that as well. Anyway, that's all the crap that's been going on here. What I want to discuss today is a couple of viewer comments. Uh, some people have been asking me about, you know, could you address this? Can you address that? So one of the first ones I wanted to address here is HF etiquette. So what is proper manners when you're on, uh, do, when you're operating on HF? Like how do you uh, check for, uh, see if a frequency is clear and things like that? So I wanted to kind of run into that. You know, the main point is going to be just use common sense. Be nice when you're on the radio. Try to help other people or try to be courteous to other people. You know, if uh, if you're on a frequency and somebody comes in, you have you know you didn't know, you know, might be innocent mistake. You're on a frequency and somebody comes in and says, "Oh, hey, by the way, we have a net on this frequency. Could you please maybe move up a couple of kilohertz?" And they ask you nicely. You know, do the right thing. If they're being nice about it and being courteous about it, there's no reason why you shouldn't just go ahead and just move up or down or just find another spot to do it. Uh, it's when they become asses is when I have a problem. You know, nobody owns the frequencies. We've discussed this numerous times before. But if, you know, you're, if you're in a situation, hopefully the person that addresses you will be nice about it and hopefully they will uh, not, not uh, escalate the situation. But one of the other things I wanted to discuss was how to check for a frequency or see if a frequency is clear. And you'll, you'll if you read, depending on what books you read on when you're taking your ham radio exams for general and stuff like that, or just see different people discussing this, 
the biggest word is going to be listen, listen, listen. You want to listen to the frequency. You find a frequency on the radio, you dial it in, and just listen. Give it about a minute or so and see if there's any kind of activity. Check if you have a waterfall on, on your radio, check and see if there's any kind of activity. There's nothing there. Then I say, and let's just pretend this is the only uh, HF handheld in the world. You pick up your mic and you go, is this frequency in use? Is this frequency in use? Kilo India 5, November Papa Lima. Obviously giving your call sign, not mine. And you wait. And just kick back and just sit there for a couple seconds. If nothing picks up, do it again. Is this frequency in use? Is this frequency in use? Kilo India 5, November Papa Lima. And let go. And wait. I might even do it, say, a third time. Give it a couple seconds. Is this frequency in use? Is this frequency in use? This is Kilo India 5, November Papa Lima, seeking a clear frequency. And wait. If you don't hear anything back, you're probably good to go ahead and start transmitting and working that frequency for whatever aspect of ham radio you're, you're working at the time. Whether it be parks on the air, summits on the air, or just try and make a general contact with somebody around the world randomly. But that's just a general etiquette, I would say, things to follow. Just be courteous to people. Use common sense. Don't pick a fight unless you just feel like getting in a pissing match with somebody. It's not Usually, it's just not going to be worth it. So, you follow those, uh, those little guidelines there. I think you're going to be okay. Um, you know, if, if you're on a frequency and you start getting a lot of QRM or noise... Um, and you need to move frequencies, you have a bunch of people that have been trying to contact. Let's say you're, let's say you're doing uh, parks on the air, and you got a pile up of people, but there's a lot of noise and things are interfering. It's a really hard time. You're having a really hard time hearing anything. You might want to switch frequencies. So you say, hey, I'm going to QSY, which means switch frequencies, to you know the 40-meter band or the 17-meter band or whatever. Please come find me there and then switch over. So just being courteous, these little small things you can do uh, will really greatly enhance the experience you have operating your ham radio so i hope for you new guys that'd be some good stuff for you guys to know if you're a technician going for your general this is good information if you're just getting into ham radio you'll approach this I mean, you, this is these same things follow uh, along with just doing a vhf uhf as well you want to be courteous and always check to see if our frequency is clear before you start just transmitting and blurting out on a frequency so general etiquette for hf uh, the next one is a question, that, or not a question, it's a statement from a viewer, and I felt bad about this. I wrote a nice long thing back trying to help him out, but he's like, look, I've been trying to study for my ham radio license for three years. I'm really discouraged, blah, 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 thinking about giving up. Look, don't ever give up. If you really want this, there are ways to do it. The problem is people assume that we all learn the same way, and we don't. Everybody learns differently. I myself am a memorizer. I can I can tell you the license plate of my parents' car back in 1978. I can tell you my grandparents' phone number back from 1971 or 72. So I can tell you these different things because I have a memorization. I've got almost not 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 necessarily eidetic, but I've got a very good memory. And with when it comes to numbers and things like that, I'm really really good at that. That's my way of learning. I do a memorization process. So for me, I use a specific book that's on my website. We'll go there in a second. Uh, that just had questions and answers. Because again, like I said, it is important to know things in ham radio, and you're going to learn these things as you after you get licensed, you're going to have a whole new world opened up to you. You're going to have plenty of time in your ham career to learn and experiment and understand all this stuff. If you want to get your license, I'd say get your license by any means possible. If that means just learning and, and, and uh, uh, memorizing questions and answers, regurgitating it back out on the test to pass, so be it. There's nothing wrong with that. If you are the kind of person that likes to have background, you understand better by getting background on what this is and what that is, there are books for that. If you're more of a hands-on person, you know, you got to maybe get with somebody who, who who does ham radio now, make friends with them, and sit there and have these discussions, and then also implement one of the books, one of the study guides that's out there. So with that being said, let's pop over to my desktop real quick. If you go to my website, hamradiofornontechies.com, and you scroll down... I've got a whole setup here. I've got three sections. This section is for technician, this is for a general, and this is for extra. But it's all the same thing, basically. I have this book here by Craig Buck, K4IA. These, his book is basically questions and answers only, so memorization. So memorization is your way of learning. Is that's how you interpret and comprehend things best. Get these books. His whole series of books are fantastic. The open the beginning chapters of the, or the beginning section of the book has uh, the the uh, questions and answers, but the answers have a little bit of explanation behind. It. it doesn't go really full detail. 
And the second section book, the summary of the book, is literally section by section of the exam, all the questions that are on the exam, question, answer, question, answer, question, answer. So if that's how you learn, that might be a great opportunity for you to uh, go in and learn how or, or memorize your stuff to take your exams and pass. If you want a little more background, a little more easier to follow stuff, or it gives you a little more, or gives you you know more detailed background, then I say the uh, Gordon West book series are very good books, and this will give you a more comprehensive uh, understanding of what you're learning as far as radio and antenna theory, electronics, the the uh, the uh, regulations, the stuff like that. You have a lot of stuff in there, and that's more of a background thing. So if you learn better by learning background to comprehend more, then that's the book for you. The third book by the ARRL is their general big, huge book that to me reads like the Wall Street Journal. It's boring as whale crap to me. But it has a lot of good information. And if any of you don't use it to study, you should probably have one of each of their of their manuals just as a reference for down the road. It's kind of like a good ham radio reference. If you have a question about something, you can go to that section, and they're going to have a very long and dragged out uh, detailed discussion about what that particular thing is. So find what works for you and utilize that. That's part one. Part two, once you get past the books, is going to be study exams or, pr or uh, uh, practice exams. I have three places on here. You can; these are all links to them. They're all free to sign up for. Get a free account, and each one does. Each one has a practice exam, but the one in the middle, hamexam.org, actually has uh, not only practice tests for all three exams. We have flashcards, and, and you, have, you just look at the random question pool. Uh, hamstudy.org also has practice tests for all three exams and has what's called study mode. And that allows you to take questions and answers. I think it keeps track of your progress, lets you know where you're weak and where you're strong. So you need to utilize this along with the books. But wait, there's more. In addition to that, I also have the Ham Radio Practice Test apps. And these you can keep on your phone. So you're sitting around, you're taking the wife out to the store, she's inside shopping for half an hour, and you're sitting in the car. Why not be practicing and uh, you know taking your taking one of your practice tests by utilizing these three things: the books, the online practice exams, and the test apps. This will help you to keep the stuff fresh on your mind and keep it going, keep regurgitating it, so that you're able to retain the information and get much higher scores and pass. Now, look, it doesn't matter how many. Um, it doesn't matter. You're, you don't get your score. It only matters if you get below failing. All right. You get a 74 percent or I think 74, 75 percent, something like that. If you get that, you pass. It doesn't matter. Your passing grades a passing grade. You're now licensed. You're done and over with. So don't uh, go nuts with it and hyper focus and start stressing yourself out and overthinking everything. If on the general practice exams up here, if you're testing out and you're getting an average of 80 percent. Correct. Each time you take the practice test, you're ready to go take the actual exam. Just go do it and get it over with. You know, you have nothing to lose. So that's my spiel on that. Like I said, I told this guys, look, don't get discouraged. You got to find out how it is that you learn. Let me go back to my cam here. Boop. Okay. So I said, look, you got to find out how best it is that you learn because, you know, people assume that everybody learns the same way. And when I was in school, I did, I was crap at geometry and things like that, but it's not because I didn't understand the material, it's because the way they were teaching it, I couldn't my brain couldn't interpret that and make it make sense. So I found other ways of doing it. And for me, end up being, you know, carpentry. I became a carpenter and all of a sudden geometry made all kinds of sense. You got to do angles and all that kind of stuff. So you got to find what works for you and when you find, figure that stuff out, then you're going to be a lot very much ahead of the game. So with that being said, I think that checks off that section. Don't get discouraged. Go out there, study, pass that exam, and join us here in the ham radio hobby and enjoy yourself. Uh, the next thing is going to be, uh, okay, so eh, this might be a little bit touchy, but you know what? Somebody's got to say it. Everybody's always kind of deflecting. They don't want to hurt anybody's feelings. Um, the world's changing. We are in a very, very unique state of affairs right now with the world the way it is. I'm not going to get political. I don't give a flying crap what your political standpoint is. Uh, but the world's changing, and you have to accept that it's, that things are getting bad. And ham operators are going to be a lot more needed uh, in the near future if things really go south. And I just want to iterate to you guys that you might want to consider 
you know, we, we, I, I really, man, I hate to say this, but, you know, we are at a point that we have not seen since 1983 and prior to that, 1961 with the Cuban Missile Crisis. 1983, of course, we had uh, the, uh, the a big Russian uh, scare thing with when Reagan was uh, with president. But we are in a very real situation right now where nuclear war could be a reality in our future. And I'm not going to be an alarmist and say, it's coming tomorrow, you need to pack up all your crap and run to the hills. But you got to be aware of this stuff. And you need to protect your gear. Find some way to protect your gear. I have shows I've done on the Faraday bags from Mission Darkness, and there's all kinds of things out there. Josh from uh, Ham Radio uh, Crash Course did a thing on how to build a Faraday cage from a little trash can you can get over at uh, Home Depot or Lowe's. So utilize these things and consider finding some way to protect some of your gear because if things do happen, an EMP goes off 200 miles above the United States and puts us back in 1800s, we're going to have to have some way to be able to communicate and get information to and from. That's where we as ham operators are going to come in and be the superstars for that particular event if it happens. Not saying it's going to, just let me reiterate this. I'm not trying to be an alarmist. But you need to use common sense. If you're running around blinders on thinking this isn't going to happen, you're already dead and you just don't know it. Or just, you know, you don't want to you don't want to face reality. We, it's just it's irresponsible for us to not pay attention, not prepare for these kind of things. I've been doing this for quite a while now. I'm not going to get into details about my stuff, but just to, it just goes to say I am quite prepared for anything that they can be, that can be thrown at me. And it's taken me 15, 20 years to do that. If you have not thought about this before, you might want to consider it now. <laughs> I'm not saying blow your whole bank account, blow the mortgage on it, but at least make some common sense decisions. Make sure you've got the basics that you need. And there's tons and tons of videos out there without me going into that. Um, but yeah, just, you know, something to protect your, your ham radio gear. Anything with a circuit, EMP goes off. And we just had that balloon that came over uh, came over the states here that they shot down and you know I, from a, one of my other sources out there the uh uh communist chinese government is sending out thousands more now it wouldn't be a whole lot of uh, effort for one of those things to have an emp and you know we go off and shoot something down and you know detonate it or something so use common sense protect your own protect your family protect your gear because this does happen again Communication is going to be key to make sure that we can maintain, you know, life here in America. So we're going to be the uh, we're going to be the, the heroes and the, and the superstars in that aspect. So make sure you got all your stuff going. Um, other than that, guys, I think that's pretty much it. Um, I wanted to discuss a couple more stuff. I do some video shorts on a couple little things, but um, you know, just keep going out there. If you know, if you're having problems with with learning stuff, if you're trying to upgrade to your licenses. Go back to what I said here. Go back to the website and find these different books. They're really, really good resources for you, and they're going to help you to get to that next level. And, you know, look, if I if I got to extra, anybody can. There's nothing special about the way I did what I did, except that I just sat down and I, I dedicated myself. So dedicate yourself to what you want to do. Put your goal. Set a date. Try to meet that goal and do it. Just knock it out of the park. Anyway, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. That will help the YouTube algorithm show that pe more people like you like to see videos like this. And if you have not subscribed, subscriptions down today are, are free. Just hit the little subscribe button, click on the little bell, and be notified when I do new videos. Until then, guys, my name is Scott. My call sign is Kilo India 5 November Papalima. This is Ham Raider for non-techies, and we are clear.